good morning students we are learning water resource engineering and hydrology we are discussing the hydrological parameters very in today's lecture we will discuss about estimating the missing rainfall as well as after collecting the data of rainfall how we can represent that data these two things we will learn in this lecture so let's start our lecture with the first topic that is estimating missing rainfall data sometime it may be possible to measure the rainfall at a particular rain gauge station due to absence of the observer or the instrument failure or any other reason like technicals and natural etc okay in that case the prediction of the missing data can be made with the help of available data of nearby measuring stations using few methods okay so for uh, calculating uh, this missing rainfall data we have arithmetic mean method we have inverse distance method station year method and normal ratio method so this four are the methods that we can use to find out the missing rainfall data we are starting with the first one that is arithmetic mean method well according to this method the missing rainfall of the station any particular station is computed by a simple arithmetic average of the rainfall at near station so to find out any average thing we have one formula that is p average that is or p we can say the px is equal to x because of we are uh, finding for a station x okay so p1 plus p2 plus p3 up to up to p n divided by n so this is the formula to find out the thing with this simple arithmetic average method okay here p1 p2 p3 are the rainfalls at the index stations 1 2 3 or up to up to n and n is the number of index stations well this method is used only under few conditions and those conditions are that the data uh, of at least three index stations should be available and the average annual rainfall of the missing station is within 10 percentage uh, of the average annual rainfall of the index station and uh, uh, the stations the index stations should be evenly distributed around the missing station and it should be as close as possible with each other so uh, this is about the arithmetic mean method okay uh, let's move on to the inverse distance method well in this method a set of rectangular coordinates are passed through the missing stations so that its coordinates uh, well say at the origin are 0 0 okay the coordinates x i and y i of each index stations surrounding the missing stations are found and the weightage wi of each index station is represented by the inverse of the square of its distance as this formula we have wi is equals to 1 upon di square d is the distance between that particular coordinate and the index station okay so that is x1 xi square plus yi square okay so wi is the weightage of index and xi and yi are the coordinates of index stations also this missing rainfall data of station x is then computed from the relation of px that is equals to sigma pi wi upon sigma wi this method gives good result and is therefore acceptable for scientific analysis however the limitation of this method is that it estimates missing rainfall between the highest and the lowest value of index stations the next is the station year method well in this method the records of two or more rain gauge stations are combined into one long period the stations record are independent and the areas of stations are 
climatologically the same. So the missing record at a certain station in a particular year may be found out by the ratio of the average or by the graphical comparison. Uh, such as we can say um, in a certain year, the total rainfall for the station A is 70 centimeter and uh, uh, for the neighboring station that is the station B there is a uh, no record available that means that data is missing but if average annual rainfall at A and B in a previous year that data if we have then by doing a ratio method we can found out the rainfall at station B in the recent year the thing because here we are assuming that that all at all the station the situation is climatologically the same okay so the previous year there was some amount of rainfall that will be in the same scenario in recent year okay so according to the data of at a station we can find out it at B station okay same way if uh, we do not have the data for C so with the previous year data we can find out recent year data for that station also so this is the station year method now the fourth method that is a normal ratio method in this method when the average annual rainfall at any of the index stations is differ from that the asked station by more than 10 percent at such cases this method can be used in this method the rainfall of the index stations are weighted by the ratio of the average annual rainfall we have a mathematical formula for this that is px is equals to nx by n into p1 upon n1 plus p2 into n2 plus p3 upon n3 up to up to pn upon nn here px is nothing but the missing rainfall that we have to calculate okay now n1 n2 n3 up to, up to nn is the average annual rainfall of index station and nx is equals to average annual rainfall of missing station okay now if we uh, look at to an example uh, of this method then the example is like uh, a rain gauge that is d was inoperative during the specific storm that means that at the station d there would be some missing data well the rainfall recorded at three surrounding station that is a b and c okay during the storm where 52 85 and 70 mm so these are the rainfall recorded at a b and c station respectively now if the average annual rainfall of the station a b c d are 650 900 820 and 700 millimeter then we have to estimate the storm rainfall at the station d okay so here we have four data for the average annual rainfall and the one data is missing at the station d and that is the storm rainfall okay so for that first of all we will put the formula that is pd is equal to n d that was the nx in the formula so nd upon n plus p upon na plus pb upon nb plus pc upon nc here we have all the values we just have to substitute all the values in the formula and then we will get the answer and that answer would be pd is equals to 60.62 millimeter okay so this is how we can implement this method now the next topic that we have to discuss that is the presentation of rainfall data once we have 
uh, obtained or once we have calculated we get all the rainfall data now the next step that we have to follow that we have to uh, represent the data in a form that the people can understand easily or anal analyze it easily okay so for that we have three different method of presenting the rainfall data that is the first is hydrograph method the second that is the mass curve method and the third that is the point rainfall method so we are starting with the first one that is the hydrograph okay a hydrograph is a bar graph that showing the intensity of rainfall with respect to the time the hydrograph can be prepared either from the mass curve of the rainfall or directly from the data that is obtained from automatic rain gauges it is a very convenient way of representing the characteristics of a storm and is particularly important in the development of design storm to predict the extreme flood well the area under the hydrograph that represent the total rainfall that received in that particular duration the time interval that is shown into the graph depends on the purpose in urban drainage problems the small durations are used while uh, flood flow computation the large in the large catchment the intervals are about uh, 6 hours the next method that is the Moscow method okay so that is known as the Moscow of rainfall here a Moscow of rainfall is a plot of cumulative depth of rainfall against time the steepness of the curve indicates the intensity of rainfall a horizontal portion of the curve that indicates that there was no rainfall during that period okay here uh, in between here you can see there is a straight path okay so this straight path in this curve that indicates there was no rainfall during this particular period or this particular hour well also in this figure a and b is the first period of rainfall uh, there was no rainfall at b to c and therefore the curve is horizontal also now c to d shows the second period of rainfall while e to f shows the third period of rainfall here uh, b to c d to e and after the f the slope was straight there was no slope okay so that condition shows there is a no rainfall in that particular duration okay so the mass curve of rainfall is a kind of rising curve here the intensity of rainfall during any period that is given by i is equals to delta p upon delta t okay from the mass curve of rainfall, the total depth of rainfall and the intensity of rainfall at any instant of time can be found. Okay, the mass curve of a designed storm can be also obtained by maximizing the mass curves of the severe storm in the basin. So this is what about the mass curve of rainfall. The next method that is the point rainfall method well here the rainfall data of a station is known as the point rainfall this data can be represented as the daily weekly monthly seasonal or the annual values well the point rainfall data is represented graphically as a plot of magnitude and chronologically time in the form of a bar diagram a point rainfall data are used collectively to estimate estimate the real variability of rainfall it is also used in deriving the intensity duration frequency curves however the point rainfall data bar graph does not reflect any clear trends or the pattern in the rainfall due to abrupt variation in individual years 
in order to suppress this and to bring out the general trend of the rainfall moving average curve can be used okay so this was all about how we can present the rainfall data and how we can find out the missing rainfall data okay i hope students you understand the topic thoroughly thank you so much for your kind attention we'll see you in the next lecture